Hi students, welcome to Year 11 Biology and Module 2, The Organisation of Living Things. This is video number eight, and we're going to just talk briefly about imaging autotrophs. What we need to do is investigate the structures of autotrophs through the examination of a variety of materials, such as using imaging technologies to determine plant structures. So how do we track substances in plants? How do we know what's going on? Well, we know um, that um, in, certainly in terms of medical advances, there's a lot of techniques that we can use now to understand parts of the body without actually cutting them open. So the main way that we do that is through the use of parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. We take advantage of the fact that there are a lot of substances that are water soluble, that is that they will dissolve in water and therefore and if they are water soluble, then that means they'll be able to um, pass into a part of the plant that may well then be transported elsewhere. So what we can do is we can follow the pathways through the plant. Now this may be the case if um, the substance is being moved but then is actually being dropped off somewhere and then incorporated into structures. One of the things that we will look at is a very important isotope, carbon-14, um, which can exist as carbon dioxide, which can move uh, diffuse through the plant, but it can also uh, then be incorporated into sugars, for example, such as glucose, and then we can see what happens to that glucose after it's formed in the process of photosynthesis. The electromagnetic spectrum provides a huge range of possible wavelengths of light for us to look at. Um, and what it does is it goes beyond just the visible parts of light that we can see, that uh, classic rainbow, uh, through into um, higher energy. So right at the um, gamma radiation, um, which is what we often find being released in um, by radioactive nuclei. Um, that we can, uh, we can detect those at very high energy, very short wavelengths, um, right down to the other end of the spectrum, which is very long um, radio waves and um, long wavelengths and very low energy. So uh, we increase wavelengths as we go to the uh, right in the diagram on the screen uh, and increase frequency as we go to the left. So that decreases the wavelength. They're all assuming the speed of light, so therefore um, that's a function of frequency and wavelength, and so therefore um, those two things will um, be inversely related to one another as one goes up and the other one comes down. Now in um, plants, for plants what we're going to be looking at is the fact that there's components of the infrared spectrum that we can use. There's also, as I mentioned, radioisotopes that we can use. Um, there's some magnetic resonance imaging that's also used uh, with plants. So if you think about the sort of techniques that are being used in, in animals, uh, x-rays, um, then those sorts of things can also, uh, generally speaking, most of the time also be used um, for working out what's going on in terms of plant structure. So here's a couple just to look at. Um, one of the things that we can look at is some general 3D imaging. So this occurs very, very simply by, uh, for example, um, just literally taking photos of uh, a plant. The thing with plants is they don't run away when you're trying to um, study them, so they just sit there. So what you can do is sort of take... Uh, 3Ds and uh, images, well, effectively what you'll be doing is like those panorama shots that people can now take with iPhones and uh, smartphones and things like that, where you take lots of photos and you can kind of pan all the way around, you get this, this 3D imaging. Uh, they use that quite um, effectively now at the tennis, or at least um, before COVID, uh, when they were playing tennis. Uh, and, and that was a technique where they were able to, from all of these um, different camera angles, actually show virtually three-dimensional, um, 360 degrees image of what was going on during a serve or a forehand or something like that. These sorts of techniques are fantastic. Often um, techniques that are used in one field of endeavour can be used in others. And this gives us some, some ideas about the general health of plants, you know, the number of leaves, their distribution, their general health. Uh, and it can give us some, a lot of information just um, in, in building up a, a literal three-dimensional picture of what's going on uh, with the plant. Infrared uh, radiation, which is part of our electromagnetic spectrum, is another one. And there are two types that you want to look at here, um, uh, what are called far infrared and near infrared. Um, and the different ones are associated with 
Um, either temperature, infrared uh, radiation is the sort of stuff you can feel from um, heaters, for example, bar heaters. That um, is a really good way for detecting differences in temperature. Uh, near infrared, a little bit closer to the uh, wavelengths of light uh, that are part of the visible spectrum. Uh, we can detect water mo movement through the plant. We can also look, uh, I've, I've abbreviated carbohydrates, carbo hydrates, just as CHO because it's messy writing that all the time. So I'll tell you that now and hopefully when you see it written later on, uh, you'll remember that what that is. Fluorescence is another thing that we can use, usually blue light, um, which, which may or may not be successful in allowing um, us to see some fluorescence. Uh, and usually that's about trying to track the rate of photosynthesis through the plant. I mentioned radioisotopes, tracing uh, the movement of, for example, carbon. So if we have uh, carbon dioxide, but we are able to introduce some uh, carbon-14 into that carbon dioxide, and that goes into a process like photosynthesis, then that can um, mean that it can produce something like a glucose molecule. And if we've uh, incorporated some carbon-14 into that glucose molecule, then we can detect it with the, with the Geiger counter, and I'll look at that in, in the next slide. Uh, MRIs are good too for roots. You don't want to be studying roots by digging the plant up. The roots have a very important um, role in absorbing water for the plant, but also they're very uh, much about helping um, stability and support for the plant. So if you start hacking around its roots, um, that's going to do some serious damage. So we want to be able sometimes to have a look at the root systems, see what's happening, see how healthy they are, and we can only and, and we want to try and do that without doing damage to the plant itself. So looking at MRIs in those situations can be quite helpful. So what happens if we're using something like carbon-14? As I said, carbon-14 can actually be introduced into a plant in the form of carbon dioxide. Um, Often we can do that with just a chemical reaction inside of a bell jar that allows the, the carbon dioxide to form as a result of a chemical reaction. Usually um, an acid carbonate reaction does that for you. Uh, the carbon dioxide then, of course, can be taken up by the plant through the stomates, or stomata, and, um, and through the process of photosynthesis be converted into a, a glucose molecule. Of course, not all of the carbons in the glucose molecule need to be carbon-14, but as long as there's one there, that means we can track what's actually happening to this molecule uh, by uh, using something just as simple as a Geiger counter. Uh, a plant as small as this, obviously, we um, may get uh, some uh, positive reactions to our um, Geiger counter from a number of different places, maybe from the leaf itself, maybe from the stem, potentially from the roots. But for larger plants too, we can also look at this um, and just see if we can start to track what's actually happening to um, these types of materials as they move through plants. Uh, there's a couple of different uh, examples that you have a look at. There's a few nice ones in your textbook that show you some uh, ways in which we can track uh, different types of materials through plants using these sorts of techniques. But the components of the electromagnetic spectrum are very, very important uh, when we're looking at how we do this. Uh, this is just a bit of an introduction. Hopefully you'll have an opportunity to look at a few more things in a little bit more detail. Thanks for watching.